Hey everyone, I'm Matthew Evans with Los Matadas Studios, and I'm here at the White Ridge Bike Trails, a popular mountain biking and hiking destination near San Ysidro, New Mexico. Recently, we used this beautiful desert behind me as the filming location for a scene in our recent sci-fi short film, Fault Line. Right now, I'm gonna take you behind the scenes of the making of Fault Line and show you what it was like to make this film in 47.25 hours. And yes, I will explain that. And I figured, what better place to do that than here on location at White Ridge Bike Trails? So sit back, relax, and enjoy the behind the scenes of Fault Line. We're rolling now. And three, two, one. Action. As I already hinted at, Fault Line was made for a small local 48 hour film competition. Uh, and just to be clear, this was not associated with the typical 48 hour film project that we do every year. This was a much smaller event. Uh, but there were some surface level similarities to the official 48 hour film project. For example, at the beginning of the 48 hours, we got several assignments. We got an assigned genre and a required character, prop, and line of dialogue that had to appear somewhere in the film. In addition to your genre, you have to use these three required elements in your film. The prop you have to use is a ladle. The line of dialogue, I think it's broken. And the character is Chuck or Charlie Terry. And their occupation, which has to be incorporated into their character, is a custodial engineer. Now, things got off to a little bit of a weird start at the kickoff. Our time limit for the 48 hours was supposed to start at 6 p.m., but the kickoff ended up running long by 45 minutes so that we didn't get to start until 6.45 p.m. Someone asked the organizer of the event whether we were gonna be given extra time on the back end so that we truly had 48 hours of time to make this film, and she immediately said no. So I've been referring to this as a 47.25 hour film competition, and uh, no, I'm not salty about this at all. Thanks for asking. Things improved greatly once we left the kickoff and got to work on actually writing the story for this film. My wife Soraya was the originator of the idea for this film, and we were inspired this time by an incredible book in the uh, adventure outdoor survival genre called Touching the Void, which I would highly recommend. We wanted to center this film around two characters who have to make a very difficult decision, and we wanted that decision to be the centerpiece of the entire film. But at the same time, we also took a page out of the playbook from our 2018 film Wretched, in which we alternate back and forth between scenes that are telling the backstory and then scenes that are taking place at that central event. So that Thursday evening, the writing team of my wife Soraya and our frequent collaborator Evelyn got to work on pounding out a great script. Meanwhile, my co-director and our producer, Alex Johnson, started working on creating a call sheet and working on other logistics for the filming the next day. This feels like a great time to mention that this project was officially a collaboration between Los Matadas Studios and Alex's film company, Rockledge Studios. We had a great time collaborating with them, and I would highly recommend that you go check out Rockledge Studios' YouTube channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. They do great work. The next day was our filming day, and we had basically three blocks of filming that we needed to accomplish. So I'll break this down for you location by location. So we're on the set of a non-titled sci-fi film, 48, for a competition TV show, but where we're about to go shooting, it says no shooting. I don't think that we'll get in trouble for this though. First, here at White Ridge, the team arrived in the morning to shoot that planetary exploration scene, but they were taken off guard by the fact that a freak snowstorm was blowing through this desert area, turning this into a bit of a surreal location. Walking the set and it's just snowing. Just snowing. So it continues to snow harder and harder. Uh, there's Shia with our actors and actresses. Uh, yeah, it's it's like a blizzard. It's definitely not 50 degrees. Some of us are wearing shorts. AJ's trying to set up his camera. We're not gonna do sound because it's windy. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is this is what's happening. Yesterday it was spring, and now it's uh, full winter. When we got here, there was no snow on the ground as we're hiking up, it starts to snow. This is, we're gonna have the best special effects for sure. 
and we're about to start shooting. Another interesting tidbit, I wasn't even there. Since this 48 was scheduled from a Thursday through Saturday instead of the more typical Friday through Sunday, I still had my normal office job that I had to go to on Friday. But the good news was my co-director Alex, my wife and writer of the film Soraya, and our amazing cinematographer AJ, as well as all the rest of the talented team that were here for that scene, they handled the situation like pros. This incredibly talented team got the film off to a great start working straight through the snowstorm to uh, get things rolling and, and shoot that first scene. Okay, let's come there. So our next location was a rock wall out in Tejeras, New Mexico called Big Block. And this is where we were gonna film the scene of our character Rhett actually going over the cliff and then hanging there while he's being held by the rope that his climbing partner Charlie is holding up on top of the cliff. So this sequence was really pushing the bounds of what we've accomplished in terms of stunts for a Los Matadas film. But the good news is we had some amazing stunt coordinators to help us with this. Specifically, my brother-in-law Grant and his friend Derek. They're both climbing experts. So we spent some time out at Big Block rigging the ropes up. Uh, they were working with our lead actor Daniel to get him comfortable with rappelling since he was gonna need to rappel down this cliff. And they also worked with our cinematographer AJ to rig him up so that he could get that nice up close and personal shot while hanging in midair out on the ropes. In addition, Derek actually served as a stuntman for Daniel for the big fall jump off the cliff moment that happens near the beginning of the film. Has to be one of the coolest stunts we've ever pulled off in a film up to this point. All right, so here is my stunt double for this 48. How do you feel about jumping off a cliff for me? Uh, well, I was here in my free time earlier today and I was having a good time, so I'm ready to do it again. Yeah, oh, yeah. Awesome. Thank you for taking taking the falls for me, and I am really excited to see how it should be fun. Out. Acting while rappelling off of a rope uh, on a cliff is definitely something that I've never done before, um, and it was it was quite interesting to to maintain the safety that I need to maintain while mm -hmm. on the edge of a cliff, and also still performing with with the best performance that I'm able yeah, to, yeah. you know. So what uh, our, our safety supervisor Grant did was he he created a, a special knot that, that kind of locks the rope in place so that I can sort of essentially let go of the rope and just hang there as it, as it just stays in place so that I can be, have a little bit more confidence that I'm not gonna fall and mm -hmm. I'm not just holding it down myself. Yeah. And I could essentially just let go completely and just hang there. Um, which which helped it, but it was still scary. Like you know, I'm 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 <laughs> hanging from this edge of a cliff and delivering my lines. Um, so I did the best I could to use that to my advantage and use that scariness, like in my character, since my yeah. character's essentially about, acting. about to die. And, yeah. and it's like okay, we'll just pull all of that and use it. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, it was a, a lot of fun, and I'm, I'm really glad I got to explore that style of, of acting with, yeah. with this project. It was, it was really cool. Meanwhile, another unit of the team was working with our lead actress, Allie, to shoot her half of those scenes at a different, lower rock face in the area so that we could make good use of time. Now, throughout our time at Big Block, the snow kept starting and stopping intermittently. The trail was a total muddy disaster, and we had to spend a fair amount of time rigging up the ropes to make sure that we could shoot the rappelling scenes and that stunt fall completely safely. But once again, the combo team of Los Matadas and Rockledge came through. They all worked really, really hard during, again, difficult, cold, windy conditions to pull off these scenes, and they turned out really, really well. A it? special kudos to our cinematographer, AJ, who conquered his fear of heights to get an amazing shot suspended in midair right next to Daniel on the edge of this cliff. So bravo to AJ for, for that moment. All right, guys, that was the wrap at our second large location. And now we are on to do the night shoots. It's been awesome so far. I've gotten to do so many things I've not been able to do as an actor. And that was the main thing that Matthew asked me when we first started this project. It was, what are some of the things that I haven't done as an actor that I'd like to do? And he totally, he totally uh, was able to do that for me. How do you feel about everything we've been doing so far? Um, it's been very intensive, but it's been such a learning experience. It's been 
crazy we both have been flying off the sides of cliffs in this afternoon and I can't wait to see the final shot. The final scenes of the day were the tent scenes that were filmed in the backyard of my house as well as the final bonfire scene that was going to be filmed on the mesa just west of the city. We had a great team working on production design and lighting to set up this uh, tent that the two characters are spending time in while on the planet of T-48 and we actually did two special things to really showcase our required prop of the ladle. Space soup and the ladle chandelier. <laughs> Space suit. Matcha and oatmeal. Space suit. Matcha and oatmeal. It is. Um, Wait, you've actually just... I made it for myself for breakfast like yesterday and that's where I was like, this is space soup. Uh. Space soup. Whoever's in charge of crops, I will need a pen if possible. Yeah! Behind the scenes. Crazy setup. We got some juice. Ladle! <laughs> That's great! That is so great! You got a ladle chandelier. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Hey, AJ. How are you feeling about this entire project? It's crazy. It's been a wild ride. I've done stuff that I never thought I was going to do, and I'm glad I did it. Replying off a cliff in the snow with a camera is crazy. <laughs> and I almost didn't do it, but you know, you, you got to. So it's about 12.15 a.m. right now. Where's your mental state? It was, it's, right, it's almost gone. It's almost gone. <laughs> I just, I thought we're almost there though, probably another hour. Yeah. And then I can finally get that sweet sleep. Nice. So thank you for everything you do, AJ. Thank you. <laughs> After the tent scenes were completed, it was after midnight, and we still had the bonfire scene to complete. So, a team went out to the mesa just west of the city to get that scene shot, while I grabbed the rest of the footage and started editing the film. Now, editing a 48 is the point when you most feel the time crunch of a 48-hour film competition. It's very stressful and difficult and requires a lot of intense focus and as much time as can be devoted to the editing as possible, which is why we sent a team out to shoot the fire scene, but I stayed behind to actually start editing the film. So that night I stayed up until about 3.30 a.m. editing the film, then woke up at seven the next morning and edited for about another 11 hours straight the next day so that we could get the film turned in just a few minutes before our deadline at 6 p.m. So another 48 hours, well, 47.25 hour film successfully completed and as the icing on the cake for all of this we ended up winning first place in the competition <laughs> a huge thank you again to alex johnson and his rock ledge studios team this was a really exciting collaboration to get to work with him so closely on this and again i encourage you to go check out rock ledge studios and see some of the stuff that they've made because they have some really really cool films and some exciting stuff that's going to be coming out pretty soon so that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes look at Fault Line. And as always, be sure to stay tuned to Los Matata Studios because we've got more one minute films as well as longer films like Fault Line coming the rest of this year. So stay tuned and we'll see you in the next one.